Okay, guys. So this is going to be a video of me going over the breadboard layout of uh, part one of my audio spectrum analyzer. There is a very detailed description of this on my blog. So if uh, the way I word things is confusing, it's probably said better on my blog. There's also equations there and pictures, so that should help out. This is going to be sort of a general overview of how it works and the parts why the parts are chosen. So the main, the first main thing are these two guys here. These are both LM3914s and they are dot or bar display drivers. So because I chose to display the frequencies on LED bar graphs, I had to find a way to light up the LEDs sort of properly and efficiently and that's what these guys are doing. So the, each one corresponds to a 10 segment LED bar graph. However, these are wired to all of the columns and you'll see why later. But right now, the LM3914 are chips that sense analog voltage levels and they drive the 10 LEDs based on the voltage level uh, and they provide a linear analog display. Uh, the chip controls the LEDs by grounding them so you can just line them up beside the LED bar graphs like I did and you'll need to worry about the power. So because I'm using two bar graphs in uh, a column I need two LM3914s However, instead of using two separate LM3914s, I can wire them together uh, and cascade them so that it's really seamless when I'm trying to get the voltage range that I want. So these guys, as well as lighting up the bar graphs, they allow me to choose the voltage range I want to display by simply my resistors that I choose. So the equation is on my blog and it's here. So this is the equation. And you can see that it's the ratio between resistor 1 and resistor 2. So in my case, both resistors are 2.2K. Uh, yeah, this should be a K. I'll change that. And then, so the ratio would be 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 1.5 times 2 is 2.5. I want to display an overall voltage range from 0 to 5 volts. So that means each LM3914 is going to display 2.5 volts for its range, right? 2.5, 2.5 gives me 0 to 5 volts. These chips also let you decide the brightness of the LEDs you're powering. Uh, so R1 determines the brightness, resistor 1. So, and this, so it affects the milliamps being supplied to your LEDs. So 12.5 divided by your resistor 1, in my case, would be sort of like 6, six milliamps, which is pretty good. As you can see from the picture, they're pretty bright. Sorry, they're pretty bright. Uh, I like that. Uh, so yes, in short, R1 determines the milliamps being supplied to your LEDs, and the ratio of resistor 2 to resistor 1 determines the voltage range. Okay, so next is on to the uh, MSGEQ7, which is this chip right there. So this chip is a 7-band graphic equalizer that divides the audio spectrum, so it divides the song or the sound into 7 frequencies. Uh, these frequencies are, or the multiplexer inside the chip are peak detected. So to run this chip you have to supply it with a strobe and to do that I uh, used a sketch on my Arduino which is just setting the pin high and low. So whenever the pin is low the value that is being read by the MSG EQ7 is being sent to the next chip. Whenever the pin is high, the spectrum that it's that the chip is on 
is being increased by one, so the channel is increasing by one, so it's now in the next spectrum. So it's, if you looked at it like seven columns, it's now in the second column. Then when it's low, it'll take the value that's being read, send it to the chip. When it's high, it'll move on to the third column and keep doing that. Then when it reaches the last spectrum, so the seventh spectrum, it goes back to the beginning because the reset pin will go high and then it'll reset it. So now this guy is a 4017 CMOS counter. This chip has pins, output pins from 0 to 9 and it acts somewhat like a multiplexer. So the chip has a clock pin which when it is high the output pin of the chip increases by 1. Uh, a single output pin of the chip will be connected to all of the V plus pins in the column. So one output pin will be connected to all of these power rails. And it will, when those that column is grounded, the LED segment will turn on. So this chip is perfect because if we connect its clock pin to the same strobe as the MSG EQ7, when the MSG EQ7 outputs the measured frequency, the 4017 will display that frequency on the, on the appropriate column of bar graphs. Now because the 4017 is a counter that counts from 0 to 9 and we only have 7 columns, we connect its pin output 7 to its reset because when its reset is high the counter reset goes back to 0. So now say we have a frequency read in so we have a song that goes into the MSG Q7 it goes to the spectrum the strobe in the MSG Q7 is low so it sends the data to the 401 counter because the 401 counter's clock pin is on the same strobe, it's in the correct column, which means it'll set the correct output pin to high. That high signal will then transfer over to the 3904 transistor, which will then connect the base and emitter pin, uh, which connects the circuit, and it will then light up all of these LEDs. So these are all these are driving the LM3914s are driving all seven columns but because they're only supplying ground when the correct column is called upon only it will light up. And because this is happening with a 1 7th duty cycle it happens extremely fast so the LEDs appear to be on at the same time, but they're actually just turning off and on very fast. Which is also why the LEDs appear to be somewhat dimmer than if you just had them on at a steady voltage. So I know that was probably a little bit confusing, but on my blog it's very easy to understand, so I suggest going over there and reading about that. Thanks for watching part one of my audio spectrum analyzer and part two should be out next week, if not, then the week after that. Okay guys, so this is my solution for creating a strobe to run the MSG EQ7. Uh, this code was developed by Jay Scoba and I got it off, I'm assuming his website at newwire.com and I thought I would just quickly run through what it's doing. So we have an analog pin, strobe pin, reset pin, and an array that holds seven values. Uh, TS is 18, which is our delay in microseconds. I called it TS because on the MSG EQ7 data sheet, it says that the strobe pulse width is 18 microseconds, and they refer to it as TS, so I thought I would do the same. Uh, the pin mode for the strobe pin, reset pin are both output and the analog reference is default which is just the speed that the Arduino is reading. 
And then we digital write the reset pin low and the strobe pin high because if you read my blog, then you know that the strobe pin will only work if the reset pin is low. And then we start the loop. So we set the reset pin high and then low, which resets the counter inside of the MSG Q7 back to zero. And then we start our for loop. So we digital write the strobe pin low, which means we are going to read the value of that uh, spectrum. We delay for TS microseconds, which is 18 microseconds. And then we store the value that we just read of that spectrum into the first slot in our array. Then we set the strobe pin high, which increases the counter inside the MSG Q7 by 1, and then we delay for 18 microseconds again. So what we're doing is we're simply reading in the values of each spectrum and storing it into the spectrum value array. Once this loop has gone through uh, seven times, then the reset pin is set high and low, which puts the counter back to zero, and it's run again. So it's very simple code. It's just creating a strobe so that the MSG Q7 will work. And this is the software solution. There is also a hardware solution, but I didn't take that path, and I hope this helped. All right, thanks. All right, guys, just to end off the video, I thought I'd give a little demonstration of just the two spectrums in action. Uh, these green LEDs, don't mind them. They are going to be future columns. They're just telling me that the counter is counting properly. All right, so let's take a look at a little demonstration. Go let the bass catch ya.